thanks to Sir Tim Smith speaking to World Business Report from Cornwall. That's it for this edition. Thanks to you for listening. Our team today, Marie and Sarah in the office, with Nick in the studio and Matt's editorial oversight from home. Bye-bye for now. This is the BBC World Service with one man's search for his identity. Tony May was only a few days old when he was abandoned by the River Thames in London in 1942. Who on earth abandoned me? What did you do that for? He was desperate for answers and that really struck me. I'm Claire Bates and I'll be telling Tony's extraordinary story, Embankment Baby, at bbcworldservice.com slash documentaries. And in 60 minutes, it's OS with Nila McGovern. We return to the Spanish region of Catalonia to hear from people living through renewed restrictions following a surge in coronavirus cases. Tourism is a huge economic driver for Barcelona in the region. So how are hotel owners managing? Will the European Recovery Fund help restore their livelihoods? This is the BBC World Service, the world's radio station. After the news, it's people fixing the world, with me, Ruth Evans. What can countries do if they don't have enough surgeons? Well, the obvious answer is train more, but that takes a lot of money and quite a long time. And in the meantime, countless people will lose their lives because they don't have access to safe surgical care. A mother, she was bleeding. She came to our health centre. We referred her to uh, a different hospital. But then she didn't reach there and, and she died on the way. And I always remember that incident. In 2009, Ethiopia launched a radical new plan to tackle the surgery gap, training mid level health workers, like nurses and midwives, to do emergency operations. And it's really tense. The baby's in a bad situation, so you should told me that she needs to get the baby out and it's going to die. You can find out what happened on People Bits in the World. Coming up after the BBC News. Hello, this is Judy Campbell with the BBC News. A British parliamentary committee has found that successive governments failed to protect British democracy from serious Russian security threats. Members of the Intelligence and Security Committee said these aim to spread disinformation and discord. It's called for an assessment of the Brexit vote and for an immediate overhaul of government structures. Here's Rob Watson. It's obviously grim for the Russians in the sense that the MPs are saying that, look, it's a semi-paranoid, mafia-like state determined to sow disunity in the West. The allegations against the UK government are essentially that they were quite happy to see all this money come into the UK and that all sorts of Russians have all sorts of influence here. And then, of course, the big question that was out there, what about that EU referendum where we know that Russia had been, or well, certainly Russian bits, had been putting out advertising with a sympathetic to leave campaign. What the MPs found was not so much that you could say whether Russia had influenced things, but what was really shocking was that the UK government hadn't bothered to either try to protect the referendum from influence or investigate that after the result. In its response, the British government said it would be resolute in defending British democracy and values from such activities by a hostile state. It said it has seen no evidence of successful interference in the Brexit referendum and indicated a retrospective assessment was not necessary. The Kremlin insisted Russia had never interfered in elections anywhere in the world. The US Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, has held what he called candid and constructive talks with the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson in London. At a news conference, Mr Pompeo praised, among other things, Britain's decision last week to ban the Chinese telecoms giant Huawei from its 5G networks. You made a sovereign decision to ban Huawei from future 5G networks. You've joined other free nations to condemn China's broken promises on the side of British 